Okay, it's Monday again. It is World of Worship Fellowship. Every Monday we do question and answer session. It's usually open. We attempt questions from life, uh, from religion, from faith, from work, from marriage, from philosophy, from science. Uh, you know, from here, all sorts of, of places. We attempt questions on Monday. So if you have a question for us, you can always share it with us and we make an attempt. We don't claim to know everything about all those subjects. We just give our uh, revelations as we have them. And of course, our basis is usually the word of God, which is in the Bible. Yeah, because this is a, a fellowship. It's not an academic institution where we we have scholarly papers and so on. So anyway, yeah, so if you have a question, please feel free to share it with us or to join this meeting. We do this every Monday. 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, we, we invite all sorts of people. Don't, don't feel left out. Don't say I'm not as religious as these guys. I'm not a believer. I'm not. No, no, no. We invite everybody here. We don't discriminate along those lines. So please come and we we have a discussion. I think at the end of it all, we're always edified. And of course, even when we leave, uh, we are normally, you know, the revelation continues through our uh, researches, uh, interactions, fellowships, and even God Himself revealing Himself through whatever subject we're discussing. Yeah. So today we're not going to entertain many questions. We just want to talk about the question of tithing. I think it's one of those which divides Christendom right down the middle. Uh, there, there doesn't seem to be an agreement on whether a Christian should tithe or not. And when I say that, I, I mean, if you listen to whichever side you want to listen to, uh, some use arguments of the covenants. They say tithing is an Old Testament, or should I say Old Covenant uh, Levitical system. Today we don't have Levites, we don't have priests, we don't have, you know, temples and things like that. So that Levitical order was done away with when Jesus ushered into the in, in the new in the new covenant. That is one argument I've had. I've also had that it's never it's not mentioned in the New Testament at all. Uh, they say the, the people who believe thus uh, that Jesus re-emphasized so many important things from the Old Testament. He kind of repeated them in the new, and somehow tithe was not one of the things he spoke about. So they say. If, if Jesus didn't speak about it or any of the uh, apostles, maybe it's not as important as, as, as it, it should be. And of course, that argument is extended to even other things, which I don't want us to get into today. It's been extended to days of worship, what day should we worship, the fact that the New Testament does not explicitly, explicitly say, go to church on this day. You know? Yeah, so arguments have been made along those lines. And then, of course, from the other side, we have... Those who say, no, 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 giving is a principle. The principle is a principle regardless of covenants. As long as the earth exists, the, the sun will rise and it will set in the west. It will rain. Plants will go up. So there's a system God has established and giving is within that, that system. Basically, when you don't give, you block the channels because we all depend on each other one or another. If plants didn't give us food and they didn't get manure from animals and things like that, the system would get clogged. So there are those who say tithing or giving is a principle which is not limited by covenant. So that's as much as I'll say in terms of the intro. And welcome aboard. It would be nice to hear from everyone who's, who's online. Uh, of course, this has been recorded for those who've not been able to make it. We're going to share, we're going to upload this to YouTube on our channel, and we'll share the link so that you can, of course, tell us what you think. And if we don't have enough time today to finish, we shall obviously come back next week, like we always do. Yeah, so thank you. Welcome aboard. Um, yeah, so let me, let me start with Peter. Peter, just before we started recording, this was giving a bit of a background uh, about what he had read. So Peter, would you like to go first? This tithing yeah, so, animal. Yes, yeah, so I said that uh, um, when I was um, 
I think um, years ago when I was reading The Richest Man in Babylon, but also some few few days ago, I was I got interested. My, my, my I got myself interested in this topic, uh, the uh, the tithe. And when I was reading uh, The Richest Man in Babylon, that's a self help book. Therein, it is insinuated that tithe, the concept of tithe, is a, a philosophy in economics. Uh, it is a principle, a financial principle, uh, that dates far back in ancient Near East, in Mesopotamia, um, in the Mesopotamia, in, uh, in 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 Greece, in Babylon far way back, even before uh, it predates what is recorded in the Old Testament canon. So people then could do their work and reserve, reserve a certain percentage, which is now called the tenth, to the kings uh, who, uh, to whom they paid allegiance. So that's why it, it, it dates back according to what I, I read. And in the richest man in Babylon, it is when you read it, it is somehow insinuated that uh, uh, as a principle, as a financial principle, for every much you earn as profit, 10 is yours to keep. Now to keep, not in a sense of keeping, but for later investment. So it is a principle that if you're earning uh, 100,000 shillings, even before it is religionized, before religion adapts or adopts this principle, whose origins um, are not or are little to do with religion, uh, that it's a principle for every financial, as a financial principle for that for every, uh, for every much you earn as profit, 10 is yours to keep or 10 is yours to invest. So that's where I got it. And probably I would be re-educated here. Uh, if that is true, that is it possible that this originates there so that our brothers and sisters, um, uh, the Hebrews adopted it as part of their system of belief or religion? so that there are lessons or there is a message that God reveals therein. But that is the historical bit of it. Ancient Near East, in Mesopotamia, in Egypt, in Greece, uh, way far back in the Sumerian culture, um, the Babylonian culture. Probably it was simultaneous. You know, there are certain things that we say that culture X adopted this from culture Y, yet the two maybe it is also possible that the practice was simultaneous that while it was taking place in united states it was also taking place in uganda only that the cameras and and recorders were all focused in the united states and not anywhere in uganda so that what we have in record of history uh is biased or is one-sided not to mean that it was absent in other cultures, but probably the recording. I think that is for historiographers to, to educate us. I submit. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, of course, we know that culture is dynamic. Culture is not static. So, so cultures uh, pick and drop things, either through lessons learned or even from the area, people surrounding them, other cultures surrounding them. So when you say that the 10% uh, principle was probably adopted from cultures surrounding them, it's probably true. We know the, that uh, the Israelites uh, adopted a lot of things, including even the priesthood, including the sacrificial system, and so on and so forth, as well as the decalogue, like, like you mentioned earlier. So yeah, it's, po it's possible. They borrowed a few things. But yeah, whether they borrowed or, bor or didn't borrow does not matter. Here we are, this many years later, and we need to discuss this thing, this animal which they borrowed, or, or whether they whether they borrowed it or not doesn't really matter. We have something on our hands. We have a practice where Christians take back 
10% of their increase. Uh, of course, in the olden days, it was not money, illegal tender as such. It was always animals and, and crops and things like that. It has evolved into legal tender. It's a percentage which some people call a tax because we know that the income tax rate in Uganda and other countries. And it's even deducted, deducted at source. That's why some call it a tax. Uh, but then, of course, there's the giving side of things. Now, some say now above the 10%, now give of your other things as you may deem fit, the offerings and some even add fast fruits and so on and so forth. Uh, let, let me let me go to Petson. Petson, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, Jet, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear yeah. you. What? Mm. Let me let me just put a direct question to you. Should mm. a Christian type or not? And why or why not? Uh, I think I think it's uh, I, I think as a Christian. You should, you should, uh, you should type. The only problem is, uh, the it being my okay. Actually, even I think it should be mandatory, but then the percentage is where the problem is, and then also saying that tying it to, to blessings. Eh? That's 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 my biggest challenge. But apart from that, I think a Christian should type because. We belong to so many associations. For example, me, I'll give you an example. I'm a, I'm a, 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 a Villa Trust member, and I have to pay subscription every season because that money is like membership fee, where the money is the resources are used to run the club. And even it shows ownership or membership of all my allegiance that I pay to that club. And the same thing, even us who belong to professional bodies, we pay an annual subscription. So I think there should be that membership fee that should be paid to, to, to your church to show that belonging. Then number two, uh, churches do not have, of course now we are changing, but but traditional churches were not having income generating projects. But remember, these churches have things to do. They have uh, activities to implement. So the money is supposed to be gotten from such contributions as uh, tithe and 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 and, uh, and uh, as tithe and and giving. So me, I think that. Uh, it's it's actually a very very good thing for you to tithe and uh, give to church because the church needs money for it to run its activities. And number two, if you belong there, then you need to be paying some fee for you to show your commitment in in that institution or that congregation where you belong. Yeah, that's what I can say. Thanks, Ben. You 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 are, you are kind of looking at it like a subscription fee of some sort or a maintenance fee. <laughs> if uh -huh. you just kind of belong to this body, this charge, hey. this fellowship, you need to support it. Therefore, give uh, give 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 towards that. It's, it's it's almost a duty. Yes. And yet, and yet, some people argue. One of the arguments against tithe is you should give willingly. I think it's mm. Second Corinthians chapter nine and and uh, moderate. Yeah. So, yes, P Peter. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. May I ask, please? Asking me or asking Pinson? No, j j just a oh. just a question. Ah, just throwing a question to the floor, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, was this tithe lit uh, literal or figurative? so that somebody had to be exact. I'm not sure I understand your question, Peter. Maybe was, maybe someone else was, was the 10%, be, uh, uh, well understanding that percentages, I, I doubt whether percentages were then present, the maths of percentages, <laughs> I doubt whether they were there. So my question is, 
was the 10, the so-called 10%, the literal mathematical 10%, or it was a figurative expression to mean a certain amount agreed on by that society. It was literal, it was literal 10%. Oh, okay. Yep. So you had 10, 10 sheep, you put one aside. I think that's that's what a pastor means. Okay, so now that we know it was it was a fixed amount, 10%, uh, and the question I was trying to put towards Petsuri is though there are some who, are, who have a problem with that. They say, why 10%, why not 50, why not 60, why not even 100, why don't I give everything? Okay, and then they go ahead and argue. I should give cheerfully as I've willed in my heart, and there's a verse to back that up. Okay, and of course, at this point, I must say the biggest opposition to tithing or even giving in churches is because of misuse of, of the funds. Okay, now that we, we tithe in legal tender mainly, I think it's been the abuse of the whole process, and Pitson touched a bit on it. Uh, making promises if you give this you'll get this if you give that you'll get that if you don't give this you'll be cast and so on and so forth so it's been those religious charlatans who have uh, sort of messed up the whole system of giving and and of course we can always ask even in our governments at least in this part of the of the world where we are may, uh, some of the money collected is usually misused and then the question is should we continue paying our taxes or should we first fix the tax collectors and those who manage the money? That is a question we can discuss. But yeah, so because of misuse, now that's another reason against I think. Um, Paul, oh, my there? Yeah. Can you talk? Okay, Peter Benson, you answer something before Tom? Uh, actually, you see the percentage, yeah? Is, is actually not right. In fact, what what the, the best way to tithe or the best way to give is uh, churches should come up with work plans for a year or for a quarter, or, uh, whatever they choose to plan, eh? or for a month. Then it's from those work plans that people can can give. They give towards that, and then the the structures should account back to these people because you so, see we give we just give we just give blindly we just give blindly you may find that 10 percent that we're giving is not enough to finance the activities that the church has planned to do or you may find that 10 percent that we're giving is way more than what we are supposed to give but uh, the money that we give is for our use. There's actually even no money that uh, that is banked on on some account in heaven. It is for the use of us here. So we need to plan. We fund the activities that were planned for, and period. So the the, the questions were these theologians are are stealing from people. Is because they they convince people that when you give then. Your banking on your account in heaven, and uh, then they keep taking the ten percent on top of taking the ten percent. Then they even take, uh, they even take the, the 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 what, the the giving that you give in church it's like that. So really, it's it's just that uh, maybe from such discussions we can get a smarter way of doing some of of doing certain things in a better way. Okay, thanks, Ped. Pedson is an accountant, guys, eh? for those who are listening to him. So don't be surprised by his approach to things. So, so <laughs> there is something, something I think... before I... mm. Mm. Yeah. Yes, I, I was saying that something that I've picked from uh, Mr. Asimo's uh, presentation or contribution is that uh, there is a need in, in the contemporary Christian society to, to apply also additional revelations about giving, like work plans, um, knowing uh, what your expenditures are, 
knowing what your costs are and 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 calculating and knowing uh, where the tithe will give you, whether it gives you a deficit or whether it gives you a surplus or just addresses the budget. So there is such a thing as being faithful in giving a 10% uh, because pastors guided that it was a literal thing. So a 10% which does not address the needs of the ministry or the needs of the church society or the church sociology in that case. Uh, so that's what I've, I've borrowed that there is a need for people to understand that probably tithe is such a critical issue, <laughs> uh, a critical issue in a sense that it is beyond percentages. If we are to, if we are to act in light of the revelation of accounting or and, and, and mathematics and the economy or economics, not just to give foie because somebody is giving 10, 10, 10, a tenth, a tenth, but there is also need to consider other factors, just like the economist or the accountant has guided. I submit. Thank you. Yeah, so Benson's argument says you might find that 10% you're giving is not enough, so you might need to raise that to 50% or whatever the percentage. That's that's Benson's argument. Uh, I wanted to bring in Tom. I don't know if you can talk. Yes, sir. Yes, Tom. Should a Christian tithe or not? And why or why not? That's a direct question. Uh, uh, we we to discuss in the angry bit. The angry zombie Zikiri Zidanya. Ku principle ya giving. Give, but give carefully. Uh, give as as you are you are able to give. Orumurugamba. Uh, giving as you are able to give is good, but there must be there must be a guide. There must be a guiding yardstick. <coughs> Uh, Sigamanti giving Mungerio Kiriza, Mungerio Christayo is a tax. Lenya Rakuletamu or Musoro to Gezeko Kumuri and Gerio Muntu. Government is on Azona all over the world, Kati. The Wali Muntu, our Musolonga, Yagara, our way, whatever government in Tekara Kazito, our own Musoro. When some are by Zimuku Sangaracha went to Gamata and Zaka Yvai Ganizua, Bacha Yva, Bayudai, Kuanga Vali Bakorida, Avarumi, Avarumi Avari, Bakosavan on a Laki home solo. Yavaraku Kuros and the Omuku Kua Yadengo Kua is a divine principle, principle Yawa Karongo Kua giving. Nayo Muku Kua are no visible Kua. Kuwanga singo mtu ya lina buzibu kuwa. Katunulile type nga wuhiri mbaibuli. O mungezo mbidu ya nabine vya obula mbu. Dala avantu vana avaga ndu woku wa type. Vali wa wachia kule. Vali wa wavuru unji nyo. Avakulembeze wa wabada vanti ya vanga wana vajia kwe marake vya ntu vya ebeza obula mbu. Wazira fuo. Katu wa kome kwa wale mekuwa vile na basi galenga livelihood ya mweri but we only 10% owa okuwa kwa avantu kekuwa li kurundi niti avantu bali veta aga okuwe wa gai nebo vawe wa gai avantu era teva kiliza niti vawe katiba no neva kwa wata echimwe eche kumi neva chisiva mchi wato cha katonda neva gambo mbuntu niti wono wa o yakufuna mpera otowe ono fune ekibone zo other inducement for for a person to give time so so i nze ndo wazanti ndo wazanti bo bo wo mtu ebetu awe tia play obole so obuzimu era abantu Aba wa tia fle. Aba, aba, aba divukwete nga pongizi mtia fle. Aba mu 
bali ne biwundu bya dzidi kubanga bali balooza nti bawa katonda ne bagenda okizula nti esente ze bali bawayo bali bazetaga okubeza awo omulimu go bali bakola okubeza ebi kumi bali basinziza okubeza abaweza bali bakola mu bo kati abagama nti mutuleke tuwe kiyafule be kwese mwito nenga amazima genyi okuwa kwawe siku 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 achia full giving bagala kwe wala kuwa balooza nti bawonye okuwa songo okuwa in principle nabote bakuwa kanya banga bagamba giving but giving chia fule no against giving but giving a percentage njala kulooza nti nti ene omusumba ya kutuga ilinga njala kulooza nti nti okuwa in terms of percentage kumulembe guno kute kwa kuchu kamu nti tunulire vieta agobia penga community ove ya ICC ova seven CD ova bani bichi bietweta aga okumeza o community walu wa vanta watu kula mwomuli kiche vieta aga omuli mugu wanyi kweta aga chi kweta aga awo kusinziza kweta ago kutambula kweta ago kulia kati okusinziza ku 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 lifestyle ya penga community so lo gamba nemfuna ya so lo gamba niti kumanga tupuna niti tukolenga wetu ki ngari tu natate o figa ti 10% na henga tu gambie yoku watu we netu na wanga wetu ki nga si 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 chila gilo as such na henga ngeri ngeri ete kawo e yambo mungu okuna guideline kwa na wera nga kumanga oku wapu wa mungu siya kule chizivu nyo eri o mungu Bwe so maybe hapa yu nilera vya nabina oku wa kuwa mundo chiki ya kule. Zimu nyo. Meanza sewa moderator. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Tom, Petson has his hand up. I think he has a question for you or for, for all of us. Petson? And he has dropped off. Okay. When he comes back, I guess he'll ask. Um, good to see you, Eric. Um, let me let me go to Kato. Kato, do you have an answer to this question we are attempting today about tithing? We've tried to trace the origins of tithing from the Old Testament. We've talked about the charlatans who are misusing it and promising blessings and curses based on it. And yet we know that we give because we're already blessed, not because we want blessings. Kato, do you want to say something? I know you're on the fence about some of these things, but please. Yeah, I might, I might have to ask something. Uh, thank you, moderator. Uh, may I ask what is the acceptable frequency of doing this type? Oh, acceptable frequency. Yes, like every Sunday, every year, every quarter of the year. What is the general accepted frequency? Whenever. Well, for, for Whenever, uh, okay, Peter, you're yes, uh, yes, Mr. Kato, whenever you earn profits, whenever you, whenever you earn profits, minus, eh? minus 10%. Eh, okay. Uh, so it can, I, I, so it, yeah, can be as regular as a day, as an hour, as a minute, as a year, as years. <laughs> <laughs> uh well now if it is like that when soever you get a profit you have to get a token and you at least put it somewhere it would be it would be okay if um the reasons as to why you're putting it there are like clearly defined uh like not being lied that you you know what uh, you are putting uh you're giving this one to god or what uh, I, I believe maybe if um if the collectors the tithe collectors were honest about where that tithe goes and they tithe collectors, collectors. <laughs> tithe collectors. <laughs> yes if they were honest and they communicate clearly to the people who are actually giving it would uh it would be more more human, uh, and I think it would motivate a, a lot of people to give in. Like, for instance, if we are trying to collect money, like to build the Pentagon, and we are really 
since something is being built, it's not being used to, to buy Porsche cars or, or mansions and whatnot. It, 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 would be, uh, it would be okay. But the problem is uh, there is a lot of corruption, just like misuse of this money, just because the Bible says you collect a tithe and it never clearly shows where that a tithe is where that tithe is going to uh, to go. I can't say it should go in God's work. And if God was also really engaging in His activities and wanted things done, He could find some ways of supporting it Himself. He has infinite resources. But I I don't think I'm more informed to talk about tithe, uh, Mr. Moderator. But that is my that is my thought on it. I saw okay. it. Thank you. You've you given us a new word, tithe collectors. <laughs> we always knew about the tax collectors. Now we have tithe collectors. <laughs> of course, that begs the question, who should receive the tithe? <laughs> who should receive the tithe? I think that's also an important question, Kato, by the way. It, uh, I'm trying to joke, but I think it's a serious question. Who should receive the tithe? Some people... Uh, of course, because they belong to religious organizations, they always tithe to their their denominations. Others they tithe uh, to their you know their pastors. Mr. Also seen... uh, and yes? now you see the the one the one leading the the the, 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 the frock eh, is is the one entitled to that to that tithe because he immediately uh, inherits the the, the the privilege of correcting that from 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 their flock yeah we we're, we're going to discuss that by the way who should receive the tithe and why because we also had had some people who say ah me when i get my salary for example i get my 10% i go to the streets or to the homeless i give it all away i don't give it to any pastor i give it directly to the poor it's meant to benefit so there also there's also that school of thought but That's we're going to discuss better. this. Hmm? That is much better. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're trying to discuss and probably uh, get to the bottom of in this discussion. So thank you. I see Becky has joined. Good to see you, Becky. Now, let me hand over to Priest now. I don't know where you're going to start from there. There have been so many things thrown on the floor. But I think you should start from... Isaiah, are you there? You should start from... Yeah. The, yes, I think being an old covenant concept, and now we are in the new covenant. I think that's one of the biggest arguments against tithe, at least for those people who believe us. So, do you want to start with the covenants very briefly before we go into the other things? Or, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, moderator. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Yes, I um uh, I want to to address this matter in what I call the three W's. Three question W's. And uh, I have here what I have who and I have whose. What, the, who, and who? And whose. Is, is that okay? Yes. Okay, so concerning this matter of, uh, of tithe, the first question is, what, what is it? Okay. It is uh, literally 10% of how much you are blessed with. That is the literal definition of, of tithe. It is 10% of how much you have been blessed with. 
and uh, the currency of that 10% depends on what you have been blessed with. If your community is running paper money, 10% of paper money, if your blessing is in terms of produce, 10% of that blessing. If it, in, if it is in terms of livestock, 10% of that blessing. That is the literal definition of, of, of tithe. You take nine and then you give one. That's the literal definition of tithe. Then there is the conceptual or philosophical definition of tithe. What is tithe? It is not a law. It is a principle. Now, it is important for people to understand the difference between the two. Because this is where problems arise. Is somebody still around? He's online. Yes, yes, yes I, am, I'm a, I am available, sir. Yes, simply, what is the difference between a law and a principle? The practical difference. The practical difference is that in principle, I'll, I'll give an example. In principle, when mm. When you do when you eat but do not go to the latrine, mm. what comes out of not of violating not going to the latrine mm. is not a punishment mm. at all. Yes. And it is not a reward. Mm. It is a result, it is a consequence. Yes. However, the mm. law a.k.a. code of conduct. Yes. When you violate co a code of conduct, a.k.a. the law, mm. the outcomes are either punishments mm -hmm. or rewards. Exactly. Now, thank you, Mr. Serubide. I used Serubide because when I was discussing this whole idea, he, he, he understood the difference and uh, simplified it to that level. The tithe, the tithe is not a law. Where you are going to be punished if you don't give. And where you are going to be rewarded if you give. Whoever teaches tithe like that is teaching a law, is not teaching a principle. However, tithe, and tithing is a principle that facilitates what I call the faith ecosystem. You look at nature and see how nature works, how plants grow, how animals live within the environment, how the environment facilitates the survival of animals and how the animals facilitate the survival of trees. That is what I call the ecosystem how water works with the trees and how trees work with animals and how animals work with the grass, ETC, and how animals work with each other. That ecosystem is a natural ecosystem. There's what we call the faith and societal ecosystem. Faith is a principle that facilitates that faith-based sociological ecosystem. It is a principle, it's not a law. Now, that is the world. Now, there is w, the second W. Who? Who should tithe? Who shouldn't tithe? Now, here are the candidates. Only those blessed through work profit should tithe. No single unemployed person should tithe. 
No single, <laughs> no single person who is not working and gaining profits from that work should tithe. In fact, even those who are working and have not made profit, according to the auditors and accountants, those individuals should not tithe just because you're working does not mean that you are the, the work of your hand has been blessed to tithe. This is why the, the, the word of God emphasizes on tithing. Why? Because it wants you, it wants to hold you accountable even at your workplace so that you have books of accounts, you have auditors running your business and accounting for it so that you can be held accountable. And you are supposed to be accountable. Tithing is a principle that helps Christian believers to be beings who are accountable. It is an accountability factor. You don't tithe because you have money in your pockets. You don't tithe because you have livestock. You don't tithe because you have uh, uh, produce. No. What kind of produce do you have? What kind of livestock do you have? What kind of money do you have in your pockets? Now, I wish I wish uh, Francis and, uh, and uh, okay, at least Jethro is here. Francis and Jethro, those are the guys who always teach, like teaching finances. Now, tithing is a financial principle. It is an economic principle. So people should stop Tithing for, I think that is an English or Uganda word. What does it mean? Carelessly. You don't tithe because you are told to tithe. No. A tithe is tied to work and profitable work. And it is tied to particular profit. Yes, you have 10,000 in your pocket, but which kind of 10,000? From where? Now, those who teach finances know that money has types. Am I right, Jethro? Mm. Hey, not every money you have in your pocket is, is the same. You go, is, 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 is this is one money is not one kind. <laughs> so only those blessed through work profits must tithe. ABC yes, says you shouldn't tax. Yes, you don't you, you don't, don't tithe, tithe on loans. loans. Thank you, Ebi. And that is what I'm saying. This is loan money. This is capital money. This is uh, someone's money. This is uh, gift money. Someone gave you a gift. Donated to you. This is donor money. You can't be an NGO and then they give you money, the whites or the, or the blacks, whoever the donor is. And then you say, we, we, we took off a tithe. So you don't tithe on loans. You don't tithe on, on, on donations. You don't tithe on, uh, on uh, I don't know, if, if there, 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 there is even what is called saving. The accountant person is here, can help us with those categories. So this is what hasn't been taught about tithing. Who? Who tithes? Only those blessed through work profits should tithe, category number one, under who? Category number two, under who? Only the worshippers. The tithe mm -hmm. is not a secular tax. It is, it is, it is a particular tax. Let me let me maintain the word tax. It is a particular tax in those only in the ecosystem of faith and worshippers. What do I mean by this? Do, do, when you make profits. How have you made profits? What are your reasons of making profits? Because if you ask, let me use Brother Kato, I hope you won't be offended. Because Brother Kato still struggles with believing this whole God idea. So if Kato makes profits, he cannot attribute those profits to God. God is not into the equation. He's, he's not. But if, if I... If Isaiah makes profits, God is into the equation. Because Isaiah believes in God. Brother Kato is still questioning that whole idea. 
So Brother Kato will say, it is my financial and economic acumen. I have made when profits to them. It's my it's my hard work. All support ah, from, from friends exactly. and family. Exactly. You have that explanation. Uh -huh. but, but Isaiah will have that explanation of hard work plus unexplainable factors that have led to these profits. Those are unexplainable, inexplainable factors. Isaiah will say it has been God, the hand of God. First, the verse says, let not, if you become rich and say, it has only been my hard work that has garnered all this wealth that I have. But you shall know that it is God who gives you the power to prosper. That is Deuteronomy, what Serubide? Someone who knows that verse? 18. Ah, 18, thank you. Amen. So, so we Christians, no, worshippers, attribute all the prophets they have made to a certain power, external power, of course, combined by their acumen in doing things right. So this is why a Christian must go and study finances if, he's going, if he or she is going to deal with finances. It, it is in fact one of our pillars that it is, continuous education. So, 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 so who, only those blessed through work prophets, who, part B, only worshippers, only worshippers. Mm -hmm. Now, good. Now, <laughs> I, I, I will come back to this who, but for now, let me go to W3. So we now we know what the tithe is, both literally and conceptually. Now we know who should tithe. Because if someone believes that in all his work there is the hand of an external supernatural being, then that the, the participation of that supernatural being must be recognized. So to tithe is to worship is to recognize that other contributing factor. Now, that recognition is, uh, is a principle. Therefore, it is, beyond, it is beyond what your heart desires. Okay, 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 okay. That is beyond what your heart desires. <laughs> because it is a principle. You, you, uh, the you, you cannot, you cannot desire to go for excretion or you, not. You cannot. You cannot desire uh, to have meals or not. Even when you're sick and cannot eat, we shall find other medical ways of inserting pipes into your body so that the principle is not compromised. You just can't desire. And in fact, those who are advocating for giving as your heart wills, giving as your heart wills, that is half-baked Bible study. And let me demonstrate. When you say that you are going to give as your heart desires, then you are not operating under the, a principle, part A. Part B. You do not even understand the heart according to the Bible. Let me demonstrate. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 and 10, that the human heart is a sick organ. And its condition is is beyond ICU. Even the doctors cannot tell the problem of the heart. Only God can tell the problem of the heart. And he has told us the, the, the state of the heart, the heart, which is? It sick. is sick. Beyond. Now, <laughs> and beyond that. Now, it is that heart. Follow me closely. 
Because you see, what kills Bible study is this. You, you mentioned things casually because you're just going to quote only one scripture. You're going to proof text the Bible. Paul said, give willingly as your heart desires. Good, good, good. He said, now listen, listen. He said, give. Now giving is not a law. It is a principle equivalent to tithing. Good. Part A. B. Willingly. Now the big question is, is the human being with a sick heart willing to give? Or they are very much willing to take? <laughs> Given the state of the heart. You want to As take. you wish in your heart, which heart? The sick heart. <laughs> now, I will come back to that later. Let me go to who's, and then I will come back to that later. That's what I'll conclude with. Now, who's? Who's the tithe? The Bible categorically teaches three tithes. Unfortunately, those who debate and argue against tithes, theologians and late, all of them seem to put all the three into one category. Those, those who support the tithes, who told the three in one category? Those who are against the tithes, who told the three in one category, which is wrong. There were three categories of tithe in the Bible, and of course they are still there. Now, tithe number one, it is for your minister. Those are the Levites. Tithe number two, it is for your society activities. Those, that is the tithe of feasts. Category number three, it is the tithe for the poor and fugitives in your community. Now, number one, tithe for your minister is in Numbers 18, verse, verse 22 and 24. Tithe for, for fish is in Deuteronomy 14, verse 22 to 27. Tithe for the poor and fugitives in your community is in Deuteronomy 10, 8, 9, Numbers 35, 6, 7, and Exodus 21, verse 10 to 14. Those are the verses for those who want the verses. Now, let's go back slowly on this on these tithes the tithe the, the the tithe that that is is given okay on uh, on, on the, 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 the on uh, on your profits those who are working and that is given that has no time but is based on when you get the profits is this tithe to the levites the Levites are ministers because I have heard people say that they are, they are no longer Levites. But you go back to the Bible and ask yourself, how many tribes did Israel have? Answer me. Twelve. They are twelve, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. But, but you see, in actuality, there were 13. The 12 tribes <laughs> were... Which, which were, is the 13? Uh-huh. The 12 tribes were the tribes that were given, okay, authority to, to, to own land and property. The Levites were excluded from that and they were assigned, okay, to... Who, who minister to the other tribes. And it is from the Levites that we get the priests from. Excuse me, Isaiah, please. Hmm. Can I say something? Yes. 
Uh, I, I thought those, uh, the, the, the 12 you were talking about, I thought they were like sons of, of, of Jacob. That's where they, they derived that from. I don't know if I'm wrong about this. Yes, they they were they were they were they were they were they were twelve. Of, you are right. There were twelve of tribes of Israel, isn't it? Yes, I think that's that, that's why they 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 quoted like that from. So when you say thirteen, they are mm. maybe mm. you could elaborate more such that I can be in sync as well. Okay, so 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 who are who are the 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 the, the twelve the twelve sons of, uh, of of Jacob? Here we go: Judah, Reuben, Simeon, Zebulun, Issachar, Dan, Gad, Asher. How many are those? Eight, right? Put Levi as well. <laughs> then you, you, then, then Joseph on. Benjamin. Joseph, Benjamin, and... Okay, Michael. you count. You count, Joseph. Let, let, Katol, you count and let's save time. Here are the yes. tribes. Here are the, here are the sons, isn't it? Mm. Judah, Reuben, mm. Simeon, mm. Levi yes. that you want. Yes. Zebulon, Issachar, mm. Dan, mm. Gad, mm -hmm. Asher, mm -hmm. Naphtali, mm -hmm. Ephraim. Mm. Okay? Yes. Benjamin. And Benjamin, yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Benjamin. Are, yeah. Those are how many? Twelve. Those are twelve. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, by the time the Israelites capture the land, there's the tribe of Manasseh. Have you ever heard about it? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> and the tribe of Manasseh is going to occupy. So the tribe of Manasseh. This is now, now the problem with us is that we have not studied the Bible. The, when we capture the land and it is going to be Israel is going to be instituted as an institution, Manasseh takes land and Manasseh takes the place of Levi and Levi is excluded from occupying land and owning property. They are assigned to only do to minister to these other tribes. Manasseh, Manasseh was uh, descendant from from who? From from this, this is the same thing. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, pastor. Yes. As if, as if, as if, as if, uh, as if the tribe, as if Joseph, Joseph was not a tribe in Israel. He was not as a tribe, but Joseph, one one of his pastor, child. That is Joseph that is Manasseh. Yes. Joseph's Joseph two sons. Uh huh. We are, we are blessed by Jacob. Yes. So his death, uh -huh. And those two sons. We Thank are you. part of the tribes of Israel when they when they occupied Canaan. Exactly, that's where I was going. Manasseh takes the place. Manasseh, because he was the son of to Ephraim and Manasseh, because they were the two sons of uh, the, the the patriarch Joseph. Joseph is almost a patriarch now. Also, they took the place of Levi. So Levi was not supposed to have territory, twenty territory. Now these took the place of Levi. Levi now became the 13th tribe. I, I thank you, priest. I yeah. now get it. I now get it. Uh-huh. Yes. Isaiah. Yes, who was distributing hear. the land? Who was distributing the land? The sword. The sword was distributing the land. Not God. The, the sword. God will come later because Manasseh fought and took the other side of Jordan. Then the then the the, the, the Naphtali also fought there because the way they captured the land, everyone was fighting his local and getting his boundaries. That's how they got the land. But that day will come. Now, <laughs> now, Levi now becomes the minister to the twelve tribes, and the twelve tribes now were ordered to tithe to Levi. Because he's a minister. Now the question is, is it now about Levi, an ethnic group, or it is about the minister and the ministry? Answer me, ladies and gentlemen. Is the principle the, the ministry? It is about the ministry. So the argument that they are no Levites, the question is, are they ministers today? Yes. <laughs> So if they are ministers, if they are ministers, you have to tithe to them. 
pastor minister equals priest right minister equals minister i, I don't <laughs> i don't because the priest the priest is also a minister yeah, okay. Hey, the priest is a minister. The pastor is a minister. The apostle is a minister. You, I don't know what names you're going to come up with, but all of these are ministers. They are ministering to you in, in Kakande, spiritual matters. Kakande, Jingo. So let us, let us be serious. Eh? Mute, the, mute that donkey. Moderator. Kakande. <laughs> now. <laughs> now. Uh, if what office were the Levite serving, it was the ministry office. Do we have the ministry office today? If your answer is yes, you tie through that ministry office. Now, moderator, I would like now to go to, to, the, to, to your question. What was your question about the covenant? Yes, because sometimes tithing is dismissed using the covenant argument that was yes. part of the old covenant. Now we're in the new covenant. Can you also speak to that? Okay, fine. Now let us go to that. Now, the first question to ask is what was wrong with the old covenant and what is right with the new covenant? Can someone answer that question? Because mm. this uh, this is the 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 ultimate question in understanding the covenants of the Bible. The question is, what was wrong with the old covenant that it was done away with, and what is right with the new covenant? Question number one. If any Bible teacher or, or Bible student ably and rightly answers that question, covenant theology is sorted. And here is my answer. Part A, what was wrong with the old covenant? There were two things that were wrong with the old covenant. Number one, in the old covenant, okay, it was man through his actions approaching the deity, their God. There are five covenants in the Bible. And you, when you are studying the covenants, you must look for that, that theme. Who is approaching who? And how? So, that was the first problem of the old covenant. Man must obey the law and do the law so that God can work with him on, 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 on man's demands. Supplying them there. Now, now, that is the major problem with the old covenant. It is man approaching God. It is religion. It is not God approaching man. It is man approaching God. It is not God saving man. It is man saving God and the image of God. Now, the old covenant is punishment and reward best 
That is what we mean by the old covenant. The old covenant, it, it is not saying that it is in the it is in this part of the Bible which we call the Old Testament. No, in fact, the New Testament is is in the Old Testament. Uh, no, the the old the, the new covenant is in the Old Testament. It is just only mentioned, in fact, like only once in the New Testament, and it is mentioned severally in the Old Testament, the new the new covenant. Because many people yes. think, <laughs> many people think that the new covenant is in the New Testament. Yes, Pastor. It is mentioned more times in the Old Testament than it is mentioned in the New Testament. Because the new covenant in the New Testament is largely mentioned in the book of Hebrews. For those of you who have read the Bible. But the new, the new covenant is severally mentioned in the, 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 the Old Testament. For instance, Jeremiah 30. Is it 31, 30 or 31, or 30, 30, 31? 31. Uh, Pastor, I wanted to, to bring something to your attention. Yes. Yeah, in, um, in 2017, you mentioned two major perspectives of covenant of covenant theology yes you mentioned of the so sovereign grant mm. sovereign grant mm. and no 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 sir Ride. let us not go there okay oh okay. we are not teaching covenants we are we are teaching new and old oh, in okay. the context right. of tithing all right all right uh, because that day will come when when we are teaching covenant what is covenant because people do not understand what a covenant is that's why you had good i want to first of all establish with these nay nay tithers on this matter that they always front it is old covenant it is old covenant where is the old covenant and where is the new covenant because the new covenant is 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 mentioned in the Old Testament more times I I I I I, I propose than it is mentioned in the New Testament. So people have to understand that the new covenant was already in place by and through particular believers in the Old Testament. Jeremiah front seat. That's number one. Then there's what we call the Davidic covenant. The Davidic covenant is the new covenant. It's a covenant of grace and faith. Because that is the new covenant. The new covenant is, is about grace and faith. So, so for you to say that tithing was wrong with the old covenant, then you are saying that the principle was wrong. The principle cannot be wrong until nature changes. <laughs> so what is right with, now that is part one. In the new covenant, unlike the old covenant, it is now God approaching man. This is why we are not tithing the Malachi way. Because the Malachi way is, is, is Old Testament practice. The Malachi way is Deuteronomy 20, 25, 27. Where are the, where, where are the curses and, uh, and blessings? 28. <laughs> uh -huh. From up to 28. That. Those three <laughs> chapters. Now, the Malak, the, 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 Malak, the Malachi tithe is a tithe placed within the old covenant. Because it is a legal tithe. Well, some of us have waited for the for it the is a temple tithe. It is the Malachi tithe is a temple tithe. It is a legal tithe that works within rewards and punishments, blessings and curses. In, the, in Malachi, you don't tithe because you are blessed. No, you tithe to be blessed. In Malachi, if you don't tithe, you are cursed. Now, moreover, you are, you are not blessed to tithe, but you must tithe because it is a law. And if you fail, you will be cursed. In Malachi, 
the, 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 there is a God who is robbed. Now we know who is a robber. A robber is one who has overpowered the one he's robbing from. You guys be serious with biblical words and terms. Because in the Old Testament, it is man who serves God, not God who serves man. Therefore, man is more powerful symbolically than the God. This is why in the old, in the old covenant, gods are protected by the worshippers. In the new covenant, the God protects his worshippers. In the old covenant, worshippers bless God. In the new covenant, God bless worshippers. This is how we deal with the covenants. In the old covenant, it is, it is a moral state. That is the old, old, old covenant. It is a moral state. A human being is judged morally. What is the state of your morality? What are you doing? In the new covenant, it is the state of your heart. That is why it says, I, in the new covenant, I will give them a new heart. Now, let me go back to who number two. Do you remember the who number two part B? Oh, I lost you. <laughs> who number two part B says, who, who tithes? Part A, we say, only those blessed through our prophets. Okay? Part B, we say, only worshippers. What is the state of your heart, are you a worshiper and a believer that the income and profit of your of the works of your hand has been due to the participation of your God? If your answer is yes, you tithe in recognition. Tithing is recognizing that these prophets I wouldn't have made by myself. Deuteronomy 18. What just quoted us? I hope you got the scripture right. If it is not 8 7. Now, uh, in recognition of the participation of divine powers, we tithe. It is a recognition. <laughs> you are welcome. You are welcome. Why you mute? Mute for now. So, 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 do you guys understand? Now, if you don't tithe. It is because you do not recognize that is the state of your heart. You do not recognize. Giving is not recognition. Giving is part and parcel of worship, yes. But this is the principle. An exercise of this faith-based ecosystem sociology. And, and this is why we type. The state of your heart. But let me say a few words, moderator, as I wind up. On the state of the heart. So that you get to understand why this rango and rakas about tithing. Let me do that very quickly. Now, the state of the human heart, as far as tithing is concerned, is this. It is in one single word, greed. Greed. Now, look at the three tithes. You will, you will see that the categories of the three tithes are fighting this state of the human heart, which is greed. It would be greedy and greed for the 12 tribes to take territory and one tribe whose place has been taken away and they have no place to stay. It would be greed, and if they are ministering to them, it would be greed, greed by the 12 tribes not to give land in all, in all their lands to the Levites. In fact, the Levites had 13 cities and farmlands in all the 12 tribes' land. Manasseh gave the Levites, uh, uh, Naphtali gave the Levites, uh, David, Judah gave the, the, the Levites, God gave, Issachar gave, they had 13. They're called cities of refuge. 
Why did they give them? Because they were ministering to them. This is what Paul intimates in the New Testament when he says, I have a spiritual right as a preacher to benefit from your income since you benefit materially, to ben benefit materially from you, since you benefit from me spiritually. Did anyone read that scripture? Hello, yes. am, am, I alone? Yes. am I alone here? Yes, yes, I've read this. Some, someone find it and post it here so people can understand what we're explaining. Paul is intimating the same principle of the Levitical order and telling them, I am your minister. I have rights. Now, what are rights? 10%. Those rights are not willing giver because we know they are no willing givers. I'm going to demonstrate right now. They are no willing giver. Those who say that we must give willing, they don't give. And in case you are actually even intimating willing giving, I can assure you, the best giving in the Bible is not in the New Testament. No, the best giving, willing giving, is in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, people gave. And Moses and the priests stopped people from giving. Tell me one single church where people have stopped, okay? Where people have stopped, oh, priests and pastors have stopped givers that this is enough. Now, those willing givers in the Old Testament were tithing as well. Why are the New Testament believers want only to, to be willing givers and not tithers? Because we have the two covered in the Old Testament. Is this honest Bible study? No, it is not. It is Bible study founded and placed on greed. Number two, they tithed for societal activities. And this was done every after three years. All the nation tithed for societal activities. This operated as a national tax. They call them fees. What are we going to do in our community? They test for that. It was all, almost a fundraising to build their communities. Number three, they test for the poor and the fugitives in their community. And Mark, you here's the thing. Even the Levites test. They test why? Because the test that is given to them is a profit of what they have gotten from their ministry. So they also tithe. No one was excluded from this principle. Because many people think that priest Isaiah is telling you to tithe to him so that he, for him is excluded from tithing. No, it is a principle. They also tithe on what was tithe. Thank you for that scripture. First Corinthians 9, 1 to 16, where Paul is actually re-echoing the principles of the Old Testament. And these ones restrict and restrain them to, to giving. No, giving is covered in offertory. Tithe is different. And the two are exercised concurrently. I have told you where the tithe goes. We have the ministers, we have the, the society activities, the feasts, and then we have the poor and the fugitives. Then what about buying chairs in your church, building wash places? The one that Pedersen was talking about, sponsoring uh, media, media evangelism, and media crusades and conferences. That is offering and giving. And those you give per need. But our major problem, Mr. Moderator, and those who are listening to me, is greed. We are greedy. Let us not justify our greed. Using using verses and these excuses. The Bible is here, it's not going anywhere. All those verses that you say are here. If you say it was a law, it was no, it was not a law. It was a principle. I know what the law is. I know the problem of the old of the old covenant. I know what, what was wrong with it. I know what is right with the new covenant. I know it is there in the Bible. You studied the covenants. We will come back here one day and we teach the, the five covenants in the Bible. And then you see how they work before you say, old covenant, new covenant. But where is, where, where is even the, the new covenant? It is largely in the Old Testament. 
the problem is greed. Who are greedy? Who are those who are greedy? Category one. The, the, the believers are greedy. Now, category two, the ministers are greedy. Now, because both are greedy, this is what happens. The, the greedy ministers, who, who want to take from the greedy believers, use three things. They have three approaches to their fellow greedy believers. Approach number one, threats. Threats. They threaten the greedy ministers, threaten greedy believers by telling them that if they don't tithe, they will be cursed. Now, that is the old covenant way. That is Malachi. That is the temple tithe. It is that temple tithe that, 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 that people hated. People like, like Zacchaeus that Tom mentioned. Zacchaeus was not hated because he was collecting tithe for, for, uh, for, for Romans only. No, Zacchaeus was also collecting tithe for temple, for the temple. That is what we call the tax collectors. He was also a, a tithe collector. And people were arrested for not paying the temple tithe, Malachi. It is the same thing around the temple that Jesus comes and overturns the tables and throws them away outside. Because when Jesus was commenting on the tithe, he says that, well, you do well to tithe, but there are more important things that you don't, you miss out. Why didn't he say that it is, it is wrong and a curse to tithe in Matthew? He mentioned the tithe and commanded it and further advised that there, there are even other things that you are not doing that you should be doing. It's not only the tithe. This is in the New Testament. <laughs> now, the problem is that greater ministers threaten greater believers with the curses. If you don't tithe, you will be cursed. That's problem number one. So people tithe in fear to be cursed by this God. God wants his money. If you don't give him his money, you are going to be cursed. I will come to that. But we know that is the, the only covenant. Approach and the practice of tithing. Abuse of tithing. Number two, promises. They now, you remember the punishment and reward? Only mm. covenant approach? Uh -huh. They mm. tell those who tithe that if you tithe, you are going to be, to be blessed. Now, in the new covenant, the tithe is post-blessing. In the old, test old covenant, the tithe is pre-blessing. Tithing is a condition to be blessed, old covenant. New covenant, tithing is a state of the blessed. You, <laughs> you only tithe because you are blessed, new covenant. And only those who are blessed are required to tithe. In old covenant, you, 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 do you want to be blessed? Tithe. Yes. This is what you see in the Pentecostal churches. Seed, your seed, seed ten thousand dollars, so that you can get a hundred thousand dollars. Seed, the size of your seed will determine the size of your blessing. That is old covenant. That is old covenant, my friends. <laughs> so people tithe to be blessed. That is old covenant. But, but these, these, these principles here are exercised by greedy ministers. All greedy believers. The reason why you are threatened is because you also do not want, you are not willing givers, neither are you willing tithers. So fellow greedy ministers are threatening you. This is something I don't do at my fellowship. At least I have members here, they can confess. And tell me whether I've ever threatened them or even promised them. I have not. 
for that matter, that is why I have nurtured the liberal greed. And they have not converted. That is the state of their heart. But if the grace <laughs> falls on you and you're converted and you become a worshiper, you will weave to tithe. <laughs> Number three, deception. They lie. They lie. They lie that God will curse you for not tithing. It is a lie. My dear brother, my dear sister, God's reign reigns on believers and non-believers. The richest men in this world and women and are, are non-believers. I, I might be wrong. But the 66 the 66 wealthiest men that have uh, wealth of 4 billion people of the population of the entire of the entire world 99% of those 66 wealthy men are not christians are not believers therefore whether you tithe or not whether you tithe or not you will be blessed amen <laughs> you will be blessed whether you tithe or not. But the state of your heart will remain in that position of greed and not recognizing the one who blesses the work of your hand, as Deuteronomy 8, 8 says. This is Bible study, ladies and gentlemen. So they lie. They are lying to you. God will not curse you because the curse of God is irreversible. Once God curses a thing, it is gone. This is why this world will be replaced by another. Why? Because it was cast in Genesis. The curse of God is permanent. It is irreversible. So let no one tell you that God cast you. No, God doesn't curse his children. Number two, they lie that God blesses you depending on how much you tithe and offer. They are lying. The theology of seed and seeding is deceptive. Deception is the mixture of truth and, 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 and falsehood. They are lying to you. God does not bless you based on your giving. No, God will bless you. God wants to bless you. In fact, the reason as to why we are even suffering, it is because many people have blocked us from accessing the open blessings of, of this God. God is loving. God is generous. God is faithful. Even when we're not faithful, God will bless you, my dear sister, my dear brother. So let no minister tell you because they want you to tithe and give them money. Let no minister tell you that if you want to be blessed, you can and I pray for you so that you can be blessed. You bring your money from the account so that I can pray for it. And no, 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 no. They're lying. They're lying. They're lying. So, moderator, the state of the of the heart of ministers is, is greed. And the state of us, the believers, is greed. Hence, this the, the threats, the empty promises, and the deception. Otherwise, I submit. A Christian should tithe on prophets. May God bless you. Amen. Thank you for that submission. Been quite a long one, but I hope it was edifying for everybody who's listening in. Now I just want to take some more questions, reactions, clarifications about tithing at this point, based on what has been said both by the priest and also others who spoke before. Any questions, comments, reactions, additions, subtractions? My key takeaway yeah. from, from priest's presentation is, and I understood it clearly, by the way, since yesterday or two days ago, I have understood and i understood two days ago <laughs> that tithe number one is a principle number one number two i understood that it is a post blessing activity those two to me were foundational thank you okay hello yes yes Mine is on, uh, hey, by the way, before, before I even submit, something so funny happened. Eh? When I was walking, I had parked at our old building. 
some chick guy grabbed my phone. So that's mm-hmm. the time when Isaiah was talking about uh, are they convenance? Eh? So yes, he rode sorry. like, mm-hmm. I think, for 50 meters. Then he brought it back. Do you know what the chick guy told me? Yeah. So you mm-hmm. were <laughs> Ponjiri. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 <laughs> Not around, around uh, I was just sloping at Serena there. So then the guy just brought back the phone. Eh? But Amen. anyway. Eh, what? I, I yeah, know, with the, I think I, I, that's the time when Isaiah was talking about over convenance, old convenance, something like that. Eh? Hallelujah. So man, I put it is, on now the speaker. Eh? Now, that is what we call mi- miracles, but now. Uh, uh, and that the power of the spirit. Uh, uh, now, God, so you see how God is involved. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I told you one day, one day God will expose you, but anyway, continue. Is uh, anyway, but uh, is not, of course. But anyway, uh, Jesus. what I wanted to say is, uh, it's good actually. Isaiah just gave us uh, the the history of uh, Titan from the Bible, and but then like from where we're going right now is. Uh, we might struggle because Isaiah might struggle to 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 bring his uh, teaching to tell people you may not die and uh, God is not going to bless you and and uh, okay what his teaching may not be uh, so practical to the masses for now. My question is what what what's the way forward? Because church needs money and uh, the only way church can get money is by the tricks the Kayanjas and the Kakandes do or by the tricks the Catholics. By the way, you, 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 one day you need to talk about what those Catholics do. Eh? They are also the same, 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 same thing they do like what these Kakandes do. So if you don't apply those tricks, that means church will always be broke. But now what is the way forward? Do I find, yes, you're teaching truth, Okay. And people are giving, but you're not cheating them. Okay. Now, now, moderator. Yes. There, there, there are two questions. One's, one is from Nathan Ibuayo. Have you seen it in the chat? Yes, that is Nathan's question, actually. And then there's that of Pepsi. Uh, yes, and they are both important. Now, Nathan came late, but we had uh, responded to that question. Eh? Uh, you, Nathan, you, you tithe to, to your... To, uh, uh, Becky's hand is up. Should should she come after this? Well, first answer. Then okay. she'll come after. Yeah. Uh, Nathan, you tithe to, to the person who ministers to you. You you don't you don't tithe to your temple and your religion. Moderator, this is very important to understand. Because many religions and religious people are tithing to their church. And then institutionalism takes over. I used to belong to a church where to a religion where the local pastor from a local church where I was collected 9M in tithes. And that 9M was sent through the, the channels of, uh, of institutions. And then after the month, the pastor who collected 9M in tithes and who ministered to the spiritual needs of these people was being paid uh, between 250, in fact, 300,000 shillings as salary. And he, he reduced the, the tithe. He remained with, uh, with uh, 270 and then also took off the offering and remained with uh, 250 as his take home. Now, I, I even wrote, wrote a, a book, a small book entitled Selfishness, addressing those issues. But Nathan, you tithe to that woman who ministers to your spiritual need, to that man who ministers to your spiritual needs. That is the person who takes your tithe. Now, the, the, the Bible had an order because the Bible does not want a, pas- a local pastor who collects 9 million shillings to, to, to tithe. First of all, he has to tithe on that tithe that is given to him, number one. Number two, however, that minister is responsible of fugitives, of widows, of orphans. It was the Levites who were responsible of the homeless. 
who were responsible of the fugitives. And what resources were they using? They were using money or resources tied to them. So I don't want this tendency, which, 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 which goes like this. Institutions are collecting tithes and building structures. Vatican is the richest. Uh, 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 General Conference of the Seventh Adventists is wealthy. The, the American headquarters of Jehovah Witness is very wealthy. <laughs> the, <laughs> you, you've seen those institutions, how they are wealthy. So, so you find that these institutions are wealthier and healthier than the believers. That is not the biblical way. You collect that tithe, take our, some our amount, of faith in the and, 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 and we have we have we have pastors flying private jets and prophets who are who are who are in convoys of uh, six hundred million Range Rovers. Sixteen of them. No, that is not the biblical way. When you tithe to your pastor. He's, he's responsible of the need in the community. Which community? That faith community. So you don't tithe to a pastor 9 million shillings and then fundraise for, for a school fees for the orphan in your church. You send that to the pastor and you support the pastor through that because he's running that ministry. This is why you see uh, when, when, when Pentecostal churches had just come in Uganda, every Pentecostal church had an orphanage. Do you remember? Mm. Yeah, that was the idea. You tithe to these men of God, not for them to, to wear five thousand dollar suits. No. It is for them to be comfortable and work on the need in the community. It is called evangelism. This is why Watoto Church has grown like it has grown and has been in this state like this. Why? Because the, the money that was collected, of course, was donor money for them and other, and of course, uh, many of that money was uh, offering and many of that money was also, much of that money was also a uh, 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 tithing. So they worked on the orphanage, built a generation. That is the idea of the Bible. But not tithing to the pastor so that he can build a, a, a skyscraper and fly a private jet. So, so Nathan, I answered your question. You tithe to the, to the person you consider as your pastor, one who ministers to your spiritual things. So now, to, to person, this is what I should say. We who are, who are restricted by the truth that, we ha that has been revealed to us in the word of God, we have no option but to tell you believers the truth and it will be upon the, the conversion of your heart to do the will of God. We will not threaten you. Okay, let me speak for myself. I will not threaten believers so that I can get offerings and, and, and tithes from them. I will not. I have been in this fellowship for, ten, for the last 10 years and have never threatened any believer. I have not given them any promises. I will not preach reward and promises. Why? Because I'm in the new covenant. I am not in the old covenant. I will not threaten anyone to take their resources. I will not. Let me die poor, but without compromising the word of God. And yes, Peterson, you're right. This, this what pr truth is not practical. Why? Because we are greedy. That is the state of our heart. We are sick. But I am only telling you the truth, all of us who are sick, that we should stop defending our sickness. Let us, let us confess our sickness. The problem I have with homosexuals, it is not because they are sinning sexually. No. A homosexual is equivalent to an adulteress. A homosexual is equivalent to one who is woman mongering. My problem with homosexuals, they want to justify their sin that I was born like this. Same problem with those who are fighting against tithing. You are justifying your greed in the name of old covenant. You are just greedy. The, the New Testament, the New Testament, the New Covenant says, willing give. Is your heart willing to give? How much have you given? Do you really give? You are sick. You are not a worshiper. 
You are not a believer. But take your time to outgrow that. And he, do not defend your sickness. I am not sick. I am in the new covenant. Do you even understand what the new covenant is? So this is the problem. So some of us are going to die poor. We are not going to be rich like the Kakandes that you're talking about. We will not. I will not be rich on the foundation of a compromised word of God. I will not. Come forward. Thank you, moderator. Okay, thank you, Pastor. Let me take Becky's question. Becky, you had your hand up. Yes, yeah, I had my hand up. Thank you so much. I am going to start with where Pastor ended on will we we giving willing fully. Uh, he he indicated as he's been saying that uh, there is no there is no giving willing fully. Yeah? But in the in the in the New Testament, we see that when the early Christians they used to sell the, their property and bring all their pro the proceedings from the sales and put it at the feet of the apostles. To me, that is I consider that giving willingly. So in that case, and I, I want to also put the widow that Jesus said that she had given beyond what others had given, I want to put her in the category of giving willingly. In, in, uh, now in our generation, and there are people who are indeed giving willing fully you know because to me I, I i want to imagine you correct me if i'm wrong that the early church prospered mainly on people who gave not not basically tithe but willing fully of of their property can't that happen now isn't it happening okay. now thank you becky first of all so for, uh, let me finish okay until the chickens of his way that you're gonna put them Yes. Se yes. Second. And, and you came late. Uh, Stop coming late. I'm very sorry. Second. Secondly, I want I, I wanted to ask. I, I always had a question about this Ananias and Safira issue. Mm. When when they were cast and died because they didn't give bring mm. back of all that they had sold, was mm. it also greed or mm. was it something else? Because okay. you also Thank talked you. about the, the givers are greedy and the receivers are greedy. Thank you very much. First of all, in the Let New me Testament... Let for five more minutes, guys. Eh? And we finish okay. that five minutes first. Yeah. Okay. First of all, Mr. One Moderator, minute. in the New Testament, there are no willing givers. This is why you should keep coming. Eh? In the New Testament, there are no willing givers. Can I demonstrate? Please. Let me start with Paul himself. When you read 1 Corinthians, is Paul dealing with the people who are willing to give or not? Whoopi, whoopi. <laughs> Someone asked me who has read those willing, willing giver texts in, in the Pauline writings. Is Paul dealing with people who are willing to give? Whoopi. If he's dealing with people who are willing to give, why is he, why is he quarreling? The guy is quarreling and cursing. Because they are not willing to give. They are no willing givers in the Pauline time. Now, let me go to Acts chapter 4, where Becky talked about. Becky, Acts chapter 4 is not Christianity, first of all. It is a cult. It is a cult built around the Jerusalem temple. James, Peter, and John told people they were in the upper room chamber where Jesus ascended from and left them. And they told people for 15 years that Jesus is coming back here to take us. So there is no need for you having property. Sell everything you have and come here and we stay here and wait for Jesus Christ. That thing that you read, that the, the New Testament gives us, we are all in what? Breaking bread together. No, it was a cult. That cult was dis dismantled by the church in Antioch by Paul. This is why, and Becky have made it very clear, that is chapter 4. In chapter 5, those who had started doubting the coming of this Jesus that these three guys were preaching, in fact, there were 12 now because they had replaced the, the dead Judah. When they started doubting their teaching, they started refusing to give and said, yeah, but we are giving and selling everything and taking on the feet of the disciples. But the man is not coming back. What if he doesn't come back in the next three years? That is how Mr. and Mrs. Safra decided to, <laughs> to, to, to reserve some 
And when they did, they were killed by the disciples, not by the spirit. They were strangled. <laughs> I thought that by God. No, 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 no. It was not God. It was Peter, Peter and the disciples who strangled the, the, this couple so that all others must understand that if you start resisting this thing, you are gone. So like what that, is in that is chapter 5 in the book of Acts. In chapter 6, the cult was dismantled when they started fighting for bread. The people, the, the, the Gentiles who had sold their property and joined the cult, and the Jews who had sold their, 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 their property and joined the cult were all around the Jerusalem temple. That is now, like what, now, now, yes, it was a Chiwetere type thing. Then, because people do not want to say these things, let me tell you these things so that you understand the Bible, gentlemen and ladies. When, when resource distribution started, they were, they were playing favoritism and tribalism in resource, resource distribution. You find that the women and the widows of the Gentiles who have sold their property were given less. And those who were Jewish were given more. And that was how the office of the deacon, the diacon office was born. Headed by Philip, I mean, headed by Stephen and, and Philip. Philip was a Gentile. Stephen was a Jew. Stephen started doing Bible study. And he realized that these guys were wrong. That is how he was stoned and he killed. Now the cult at Jerusalem that people say, oh, the former the, 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 the church, the New Testament church was together. That was not the New Testament church, ladies and gentlemen. That was a cult. It was dismantled after Stephen was, was killed. Chap that is chapter 7, chapter 8. Philip, who was studying with Philip, ran with, with Stephen, ran away for his life. My question is, why do we see Philip running away for persecution? Why is Philip being persecuted by, by Saul of Tarsus? And Peter and John and James are comfortable in Jerusalem not being persecuted. When you read the Bible, do you ask these questions? There was no willing giver. There were threats and promises. That's why they sold all their property and joined the cult at the Jerusalem temple. It is later on, after the vision, that Peter understands that all are wrong for the last 15 years, they were wrong. That even Gentiles must be preached to, and the gospel must not stop in Judea. They must go. That is Acts chapter 10. Later on, Acts chapter 9, Jesus attacks Paul and converts him. <laughs> There is no willing giver in the New Testament. We are greedy, we are sick. Please let us pray and convert. A willing giver is a willing tither. There is nothing like a willing giver and an unwilling tither. And there's nothing like a willing tither and not a willing giver. Because tithing is a form of giving. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's all we had time for today. Uh, but of course, if you have any follow-up questions, comments, additions, subtractions, just get back to us. This is going to be posted on YouTube, so you'll be able to watch it back, share it with those who will not be able, able to attend. And of course, every Monday we are here attempting questions about, about uh, the Bible, life, God, sex, marriage, you name it. Thank you very much for joining. We'll see you next Monday. God bless.